Compared to the PC, the PlayStation 4 has price performance going for it. Or does it? Today I'm going to show you guys how I turned a $250 PC into a PS4 destroyer. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with the $250 PC, which I've recently completed and I've tested it at 1080p. This thing will get you 60 frames per second in a variety of games and it will, in my opinion, beat a PS4 and an Xbox One, not only in price performance, but also in everything else. However, before we get onto the build and the actual benchmarking of games, I wanted to do a quick rundown of all the prices that I paid for these parts. So starting from left to right, we have here the motherboard and 8GB of DDR3 memory, which also came with a CPU for $82 shipped. However, as I detailed in my prologue video, the CPU was actually dead. So that I then had to spend an additional $40 to get in an X3450, which is actually a better CPU than the i5 I originally had. It's also eight threads and it's overclockable. And generally the Xeon CPUs are considered a little bit better than the standard consumer grade line, especially in this generation of CPUs. To the right of that, we have an R7 270 from XFX, which I managed to pick up for $97. And then just below that, we have a 500 gigabyte Western Digital Black Enterprise Storage Hard Drive, which I got also for $11 shipped. To the right of that, we have a Sith cooler there, which I managed to pick up a while ago for about $10. And then above that, we have an Antec 650 watt power supply, which I picked up for $14 shipped off the internet. And then just behind that, I have the final component, which is the case, where I picked that up for $2 down the junk store. So that leaves the total price of the build to around $255. However, let's get on with building this thing and doing some benchmarks now. My, my, my powers, powers. My. My, my, my powers, powers. My power, powers. Powers. My power, powers. My, my power, powers. My powers have doubled since the last time we met, Count. Good. Twice the pride, double the fall. My, my, my powers, powers. My... My, my, my powers, powers. My, power powers. Powers. My power powers. Day has passed like a hurricane to my heart, to the fire. My 
my, my power powers. Kill him. Kill him now. I shouldn't. Do it. So there we go guys, the benchmarking is finished and as you can see this computer did a great job of running pretty much any title at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Whether it was ultra or high settings or medium settings, this thing gave out great frame rates at 1080p. And that's a true 1080p mind you, not a 720p 30fps like the consoles are doing. This is a true HD picture. So there you guys have it. If you're on a budget and you have some time, then you can definitely find some really good bargains out there and build yourself an absolute price performance beast. In my case, this $250 PC is my favorite PC that I've built so far in terms of both used and new PCs. I really had a great time with it because the final result is absolutely kick ass. Now, if this was the only PC I could have, I'd be still very happy with it. 1080p gaming on this thing was an absolutely amazing experience. So if you guys want to look for used parts, just keep in mind that you can incur problems. However, in the long run, I do believe it is highly worth it if you know what you're looking for and you know what you're doing. Hopefully some of my used PC videos have given you guys ideas on what parts are pretty hot and will give you great price performance and also what parts aren't good and what parts will give you bad bang for buck. So anyway guys, that's about it. If you have any questions about the $250 console killer, then drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech Yes City for nor, nor <laughs> tech news and reviews and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye.